we're going to talk about on this video absolute versus relative cell addressing. Now it sounds extremely complicated, it isn't, it's just purely how Excel treats cells when they're in formulas. Now I've got an example on here but first just to explain you can get this sample file um, from my website, it's being displayed on screen as we speak um, and on there if you haven't registered please do so and then go to the appropriate post and then you can download this file. Um, so what we're doing on this video, well we're going to talk about this absolute and relative um, cell addressing and the example I'm going to do here is using sort of a form of expenses sheet where we're going to need to work out what the tax element is of um, my um, sundries which I've got here, rent, food, telephone, internet and so forth. Um, in my little world everything is taxed, you may argue and say well actually no I wouldn't tax food, well we are okay in this example so in the tax on B9 what we're going to do is we'll just start off with a very straightforward um, formula and function we're just going to do equals sum open bracket and then highlight the rent down to internet of that particular um, column and then close bracket and then press return so fair enough I've got my 520 on there but that's giving me the total where all I want is the tax element of it so what I'm going to do is just go into the formula bar up here at the very end put in a star and then click on B1 so I want to times the total by 20 percent and then if I press enter there we go I've now got my 104 um, units on here. Now what I'm going to do is if I copy that and paste it into the next cell you would expect it to add all this together and then times it by 20%. Well I'm afraid I'm going to burst your bubble here because it won't. Let me show you. So I've just done copy, I'm going to now just do paste and it suddenly shows zero. Well let's just investigate. Well we know that this is working. If I double click it will highlight for me on the, on the screen that I've got my summed range here and B1 is referred referring to the 20% at the top, so that's fine. I'm going to press escape. So let's have a look at the other one. Um, we've got C4, so let's just double click on that. C4 is highlighting the correct column here, but look where it's highlighting at the top here. It's going to C1 now instead of B1. Well, you can't have it both ways. In this case, we want to actually copy the information across to the adjacent column, but obviously the tax rate is in the wrong place. I would have to, at the moment, delete the C, put the B in its place, and press Enter. And then now it will work. But what's going to happen when if I copy and paste that? Well, I'm going to have the same problem. It's going to immediately want to move to the adjacent cell to the right, the left, up or down. Um, so this is clearly not any good. So what I want to do is keep the base formula that we've done, but delete any others that we've put on there. Now, there is actually a way of having your cake and eat it. And this is by actually changing the cell reference from being a relative to an absolute. Now you may have seen these in spreadsheets from time to time and wondered what the heck they are. Well, you're going to have a firm grasp of it in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click into the formula bar on the B, uh, B1 cell and then on your keyboard just press F4. Now what this will do is it should encapsulate B1 in dollar signs. So you've got dollar B, dollar one. Now if you press F4 again it will change it to B dollar one and if you press it again it changes to dollar B1 and then finally if you press again it should go back to B1 so obviously there are several states to this absolute addressing that we're doing here so let's just focus on the top one first which is dollar B dollar one so make sure it's the same as this press enter and then all I'd like you to do is go on to that particular cell the tax total and copy and paste it into the adjacent cell for February now what you should see is it's now working now all you have gotta do is double click and you can see it's still pointing at B1 so what we're gonna do is copy paste 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 or highlight the rest and paste and you should see they all work they are all pointing now to B1. So that is what the purpose of the dollar signs is for. Think of it like crazy glue, super glue. It is sticking the cell in place. So it doesn't matter where I copy it, up, down, left, right, the formula will always stick to B1. So that's the purpose of it at that point. But there are times where you want it to actually work not just on a slap bang individual cell, but you want it to move um, relative across the um, columns, but absolute on the rows. Now let me give you an example of this. 
So an example we can do is um, this. Let's go to sheet two. And you should see I've already created um, for you on here an example that we, we can work on. And um, anyone that went to school should know your 10 times table. Um, so let's just do that as an example of relative versus um, absolute cell addressing. And it's a good example, actually, because we have to cater for both types of um, absolute um, referencing here. Um, because let's just take it as it is so we've got a3 times b2 so if I just copy that cell and then I go to the next cell down and choose paste well what am I going to expect to see well it shows two but what's actually going on well it's now saying if I double click it's saying a4 which is correct times b3 well that's wrong it should be B2. Now at the moment the calculation's working properly, but if I copy and then paste in the remaining cells at the bottom here, I mean obviously 1 times 10 is not what's that? 3,628,000. It can't be. Um, so what's going wrong? Well, it's exponentially getting bigger because what's happening is that's saying times B2. If I go to the next one, it's saying times B3, which is wrong. Then it's times B4, B5, B6. And obviously what we're doing is we're doing 6 times 120, 7 times 720, 8 times 5,040, and so on and so on. So the formula is wrong. It's flawed. So what do we need to do? Well, I'm going to delete all the nonsensical ones and just go back to our original formula. And then in here, what do we want to say? Well, what I want to do is I want to be able to copy a crossword so it becomes 1 times 2, 1 times 3. But I don't want it to move downwards. I don't want it to become B3, B4. Well, in that case, then, what I want to do is I want to do a partial absolute. I want to actually lock it on, say, the um, row because I want it to move relationally across the columns as I copy across words, but I actually want to make sure that it's locked on that row only. So with B2 in the formula bar selected, I'm going to press F4 once, press F4 again, and what that's telling it to do is move freely on the columns, but you must always stay on B2. So let's just OK that. Let's see what happens if I um, copy this down now. So I'm going to do copy paste. So it's still saying B2. If I paste that down, it still says B2. B2. Let's highlight the remainder. So there we go. We can see 1 times 1 through to 10. That's working properly. Now, if I copy that across words to the next cell along and paste, what's going on? Well, 1 times 2 is, is perfectly fine. Well, what's 1 times 3 if I paste that across? 1 times 3 is not 6. So what's going on? Well, let's go back to the C3 cell and you'll see what's going on here. Because where is our value? Where is our value that we're trying to calculate? We're trying to calculate 1 times 2. But what the cell's actually saying is it's B3. Well, B3 is the actual part of our answers. So this time, I want it to stay locked on column A, but move relatively down the rows. So again, the formula's wrong in this place. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete all the other ones that we've done, because those formulas are wrong as well. And so I'm just going to go into here, click on A3. And then this time, what are we going to say? Well, the A3 cell is not relative. It is going to be a partial absolute, but it's going to be the exact opposite of what we've set up on here. So we do F4 until it reads $A3, which means lock it on the A column, but move relationally down the rows. So if we now press Enter again, OK, so we got 1 times one, OK, copy, let's just do the remainder of the ones and paste. And look, that's working fine. Now, let's go to C3 down to C12 and paste. Is that working? I'd say it is. Let's just paste again. And in actual fact, sorry, I'll tell you what, let's just highlight the remaining cells where we want the answer and paste, because it should work for everything. And now just check your maths involved here and you'll see that in every cell it is working properly. So what we've done here is we've got one formula that fits all of these cells and that's thanks to absolute addressing. So in summary we've got to understand that there are several ways of referencing a cell. We can reference a cell relatively by just saying B1. If we wanted to lock it onto a particular um, column we would then say dollar B1 
if we wanted to lock it on a row but leave it relative um, on the columns, we would say B dollar one. And they're the three states the cell can be in. So completely relative, partially relative, or finally full relative, which, sorry, full um, absolute, which means dollar B, dollar one. So hopefully this has explained a little bit of the mystique which goes on inside creating formulas. And if you get to know these very well, it will save you a lot of work in the long run. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.